If you want to level up and unlock the hottest, highest, and happiest version of yourself, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to today's episode of Hot and Unbothered. Hello, my beautiful people. It's so good to be talking to you guys. If you're new here, my name is Brianna Gomez and I am your host. I am so excited to be here talking to you guys. It feels so right, honestly, being here talking to you guys like we're best friends on FaceTime. That is the goal. That's the objective for this podcast is I want the whole thing just to feel like we're best friends talking, navigating lives and trying to upgrade to the highest versions of ourselves. I feel like these past few weeks have been crazy and the year is going by so fast the way that we're already almost done with March is absolutely blowing my mind it's really scary but I'm really excited for this year and to see what the rest of 2024 holds I've had the podcast for officially over a month now I forgot to say that in my last episode how exciting is that I'm so excited to see how far we grow and where we go together 2024 is the hot and unbothered year so tell your friends tell your family spread the word let's share the wealth and all level up to become hot and unbothered bothered in 2024. Before we jump in, you guys know I love to share a podcast review from one of you guys that you left on the episode, and this one is from Keeks, and she said, your podcast changed my life. I will always be eternally grateful for you. I love you. That one is actually from TikTok, but I just wanted to give her a quick shout out because you guys are the sweetest people ever. The fact that there is anyone out there at all listening to this right now, it blows my mind. Like the fact that somehow some way you found this podcast you are meant to be here listening to it and the fact that you like it and you're still listening means the world to me and that just goes to show that you can honestly accomplish anything I feel like a podcast was something that I had in the back of my brain for so long I kind of just kept it on the back burner but finally executing it is something that I'm so proud of myself for and you guys seem to like it too so just having that dream come into my reality is really insane to me and the fact that you guys like it it means the world so thank you guys so much for listening make sure to leave a rating and a comment or review on the podcast that you're listening to right now so that you could possibly be featured in the next episode now with that being said let's dive in today's episode is a topic that i hold near and dear to my heart because i have experienced this firsthand multiple times in my life from a very young age and I usually have some sort of podcast notes nothing like a script but I'll have some bullet points of things I want to make sure I remember to mention during the podcast or the episode things that I'm like okay this is a really good point for this topic I want to make sure I remember to tell the listeners this Today, I have zero notes, zero structure, because I feel so passionately about this topic. I feel like I could talk about it forever and ever, just right off the top of my head. So we'll see how this goes. Bear with me. I want you to think about a guy that you were talking to, perhaps dated, a person who you felt like you were giving them everything. You were always there for them whenever they needed you. You were there at their beck and call. You would have done anything for them and they honestly took advantage of that maybe you didn't realize it at the moment maybe it's happening right now and you still haven't realized it but honestly no matter how hard you tried and tried and tried to get them to love you and notice you in the same way that you were loving and giving them attention you just couldn't get it from them maybe they pushed you away maybe they gaslit you or manipulated you and made you feel like you were less than them and that you weren't worthy of the best kind of love usually 99% of the time, this is a toxic manipulative relationship. It's a unrequited love type situation. It was unhealthy in the sense that they were not able to see your true whole value. I know a lot of you loved my pink diamond theory episode. That one is like my number one theory, but it goes hand in hand in this. So if you liked my pink diamond episode, This one is for you and it will definitely resonate as well. I think they tie together really well. We'll come back to that. But overall, this person in your life, they could not see your value no matter how hard you tried. And it's almost like them not seeing your value makes you 
want and crave that validation and that affection from them even more, which obviously is not healthy, but I totally understand when we're in the situation, it's something that we can't even really control. You can't even truly help it because you are in this mindset where you just need, like you are craving that validation from a certain person, mainly because they aren't giving it to you. And it's like, hey, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. I'm right in front of you. Like I'm putting my best foot forward. I am willing to give you anything and be here for you and love you and stay with you and care for you. Why don't you want me? Maybe it's in a less obvious way, but in a relationship or even a friendship where you feel like you are constantly pulling the weight. You're constantly putting in the effort to see that person, text that person, gift them things, however you show your love language, and they honestly just aren't reciprocating the same. So I want you to think about your relationship currently or the previous one and think about were you the person who was constantly putting in the extra effort, making the plans, making the phone calls, going out of your way to be there for that person, and were they just taking taking advantage of that. I feel like this is super common in the girl and I don't mean to disregard the men, but for the women in the relationship, we are such emotional creatures and one, we mature so much earlier than men. And I don't mean this for a diss on the guys or anything like that. We love men, but I'm just saying scientifically, their frontal lobe, their common sense does not develop until years after ours does. And that shows so much in relationships. Why do you think that women are always dating older? Because of the maturity levels, because of the literal like common sense, the frontal lobe in your brain, the guys just don't have that but they will and they will regret it. Do you ever feel like in your relationships, your situationships, talking stages, maybe even friendships, you are constantly bending over backwards trying to be the perfect person, the perfect match for that partner. You are being there for them whenever they need you. You're giving your all, putting in all the effort, always available to text them or call them, show them love and affection, and you are always ready for them. You are emotionally open and available. You know you have strong feelings for them, but they don't feel the same. It feels like you you are the perfect person for them. You have everything that they could possibly want and need. You have that to offer, but they still can't commit to you for some reason. They still aren't ready for you. They don't want to be with you and you don't know why. Like they literally can't tell you why. There's no good reason for it. Not that they don't like you, not that you aren't compatible because you are compatible and you do really get along. You have great times together. You have so much fun, but for some reason, they just can't pick you and you are perfect. Like, you know, on paper, maybe you're their type. You are everything they could want in a person. You know, you could make their life so much better. You could add so much value to their being, but for some reason, they just can't see that. Everyone else could see it, but they can't. I have a diagnosis for you. You have the one that got away syndrome. Welcome to today's episode of Hot and Unbothered, a theory that I like to call the one that got away syndrome. The one that got away syndrome is inevitable. It will never be your fault, but so many hot girls who know their value and know their worth, who have so much to offer, they're beautiful, they're creative, they're lively, they're compassionate and full with so much to give. I have some news for you. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna be the one that got away in every single man's life who passes you by. And there's a science behind this. It's not like blind conceitedness or confidence, like being like, oh, I'm the best person that this guy will ever have. Like, no. One, you can be self-aware and decide that for yourself. But personally, I know in my lifetime, the guys that I've dated or talked to, I know every single one of them, which honestly, that list is small. Let me be clear. But I have been in a couple of long-term relationships in my life. And I know in every one of those, I will be, until the day that they die, the best that they will ever or could ever get. And the crazy thing is, I have no doubt in my mind that they know that as well. And that's something they just have to live with. And I have this down to a science, to a textbook definition. The one that got away syndrome is when you are in a situation with a partner, um, it doesn't have to be official, but even a talking stage, this is definitely, I would say, the most common in situationships, but it goes for relationships as well, friendships, if you feel like that applies for you. But the one that got away syndrome is when you are in 
a situation, a partnership of some kind with a person, and you are giving it your all. You are putting so much thought and effort and care into your relationship with this person. And you are always there for them. You're always available when they need you. You know, at the first ring of the phone, like you are there, you're canceling your plans. It's like the song August by Taylor Swift, canceling all their plans just in case they call. Like you are fully in love with this person you know love could be a scary word for some people but you are you are down like you are ready for this person you know you want to be with them and you are fully standing there ready for them to pick you and for some reason they just can't and there will always be a reason for this you know like I'm not doing well mentally I have a lot of family stuff going on like I just got out of a really bad breakup and like granted sometimes those are good reasons It gets to the point, though, when you are getting an excuse every single time and they keep having something to say to excuse their shitty behavior or excuse their inconsistencies or their lack of commitment. There is always something that comes up, a reason why they can't choose you. But it's never a no. They will never blatantly tell you no because they like you. Who wouldn't? Like, look at you. You're hot. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're talented. You are high value. Why would they want to let you go? The one that got away syndrome is when people find you at a time in their life when they aren't ready for you, but they see you as a high value woman. They see your potential. They see you as someone that they could have a future with. Like they understand that you are so valuable and that they honestly don't deserve you. They see that. And they know that they are at a point in their life where they are not ready for you. They aren't at a place where they're able to give you what you deserve. They aren't in a place where they are capable of giving you what you deserve and meeting you where you are. But they still know that sometime down the line, maybe you're someone they'll be ready for once they grow up, once they mature, once they have their whole phase, they want to come back to you. So selfishly, they're not going to tell you no. They're not going to tell you never but they will string you along, breadcrumb you, breadcrumb you along, leave you little trails to follow and hang on to, hoping that one day maybe he'll finally see your worth. They're gonna trail you along, string you along until you can't take it anymore. So selfishly, they string you along. They don't say no. They will never say never. They won't say this will never work out. They'll have a reason as to why they can't give you everything right now. So selfishly, they string you along little by little. They leave you little breadcrumbs, just a little taste, just enough to keep you clinging on and wanting more. They string you along over and over again so that you can't leave. Being strung along like that and being led on and in a situationship, it's so much harder than just receiving the flat out no. Like I could take the rejection, like just give it to me. A no is easier to take and accept as an answer and move on opposed to the maybes. But eventually they string you along for so much time and they play this hot and cold game for so long until you literally reach your breaking point and you can't take it a second longer. So you finally walk away and after all this back and forth, you realize that you are better than this, you know what you deserve, you know your standards and that you deserve better. So finally, when you learn to detach, stop getting strung along, stop clinging on to this person who clearly doesn't see you, you finally learn to walk away. You cut the tie and you walk away. And unfortunately, it takes that It takes you walking away for him to realize what he had when he had it. And it's too late because you're already gone. So yes, at some point in time, he will mature. He will do better. He will learn to be the person that you need and be capable of what you need. But by the time he realizes all that, by the time he realizes a good girl when he had it, it's too late. And you hear that so much. It literally sucks because half the time it takes you walking away for them to realize it. But you can't go back on that because if you go back on that, once you already walked away, like you look like a pushover and they're never gonna learn. They're never gonna learn their lesson if you keep like leaving and coming back. They're gonna expect you to come back every single time. So that's why I don't really agree with like the back and forth and like we're over but we're back together breakups. Like someone needs to choose you wholeheartedly. And if the timing isn't right, let go. Right person, wrong time. I think, you know, it's real, but if they are really the right person, they will find you 
at the right time. And it doesn't mean the first time they come around will be the right time, but like take the time to heal and then come back to it. And if you guys are both healed and ready for each other at the same place at the same time, then it is meant to be. But you can't keep making excuses for reasons why this person can't choose you. Like obviously there's exceptions, but I'm saying when it's over and over time and time again, especially in relationships, like if you're constantly being treated like shit, they're never going to learn. They're never going to learn until you finally gain the strength and the love for yourself to get up and walk away and don't look back do not look back once the second that they push you so far to the edge or string you along so far that you are so fed up with it you can't take it anymore because you're exhausted it's so exhausting getting strung along you reach that breaking point where you are just like okay, I'm done. And you honestly, you can't feel anything for this person anymore. Once you realize the shit that they put you through, like it becomes so easy to walk away, which I don't think guys who do that understand. Like the further they string us along, the longer they are unsure about us, that turns us off. That deters us. That gives us an answer. Someone being unsure about you, that is the answer. So if they're stringing you along, I promise it's not worth it. It never is. So bottom line is they lose you. And they will beg for you back. They will claim they're ready now. And like, I believe them. I believe that it does take a good woman sometimes to learn how to step it up, to learn that you need to get your shit together. Sometimes, unfortunately, that is the push that it takes. That's why you hear a lot of girls being like, I'm the girlfriend that's making him the perfect boyfriend for the next girl, which really does suck that they have to learn from the lack of your presence. That's what teaches them to be a better person. Like, too bad you couldn't have done that while we were actually together. Sure, once they lose you, they can find other girls maybe down the line, but they will be looking for you in every single girl that they are with and they will never find it because you are irreplaceable, but you set the standard for every single girl he will be with after you. And it's insane. The fact that they had the most perfect girl, their dream girl right in front of them, but they couldn't get it together for her. They couldn't step up to the plate, be a man, and suck up their pride, suck up whatever they had going on and be with you. They couldn't choose you, and so they lost you. They will have you in the back of their head for the rest of their life, and I promise you that. I say that with 100% certainty. You will be the one that got away for the rest of their life. So have some peace knowing that at least. Like if you are sad, if you're like, damn, like I wish he really could have gotten it together for me. Like that was so shitty. And obviously it sucks to go through. Find some peace in the fact that I promise you they will absolutely never recover from you. Not in a negative way, but the fact that you were so good to them and they took advantage of that. They literally could not get it together for two seconds to be with a high value woman. You weren't asking for much. You weren't asking for anything. And I think that's the crazy part is that they will realize looking back that you were so easy to love you just wanted to be there you just wanted them to let you in and just be together but instead they were being selfish they were being manipulative they were taking advantage of your niceness and your love and just pushing you off to the side you were being treated as an option that would be there no matter what and i understand as humans we have so many other priorities in life we have work we have school we have family we have friends and They were putting you in last place. Do not get me wrong here. I do think it's super beneficial for both parties in a relationship to have their shit somewhat figured out before coming together. Like traumas, past relationships, other things. Like I do think you want to have that stuff healed before coming together so you can be the best version of yourself for each other so that you could put your best foot forward. However, I do have an issue with it when you are stringing that person along constantly. Like if you have shit to work out, say that. Literally say that. Say, hey, let's take some time apart. Let's work on these things. And then if the time is right, we'll come back together. That's what me and my current boyfriend did actually. We both got out of horrible toxic relationships and we came back together as better people. We took the time to heal. We liked each other for a long time, but we took the time to heal first before 
committing to each other and messing with each other's feelings so much to the point where one of us can't take it anymore. So please take this as your sign to learn to walk away from people and situations who are not serving you, who do not see your true value and they're taking advantage of you. Like, what is that about? I don't understand it. And it's so hard to understand the fact that sometimes men will have a perfect, gorgeous inside and out girl right in front of them and they just can't choose her. And that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. That's the main thing. Don't ever take it as rejection and feel like knocked down by it. I mean, obviously you're going to feel hurt and you're going to miss the person, but remember that they have their own shit to figure out and their incapability to love you. That says nothing about you and everything about them. Let them play on their playing field. If they feel the need to like go see what's out there and party and participate in hookup culture and hoe around like let them do that I swear like never wait for someone to do that how could you sit back and let them do all that and then have them come back to you first of all never you deserve someone who's going to take you on dates and give you their time and I know like time money and maturity plays huge aspects in that but I truly believe that if they really want to be with you they will try to the best of their ability to be ready for you and if they can't be ready for you no matter how hard they try they will communicate that to you so that they don't hurt you and string you along so sometimes you just have to have that respect for yourself and learn that enough is enough if they wanted you and ask yourself this if they really wanted you why hasn't it happened yet? I don't know exactly what situation you're going through. If you're waiting on a text, if you're waiting for a call, if you're waiting for them to ask you to marry them, if they really wanted you, why hasn't it happened yet? And I'm not saying you have to give an ultimatum or anything crazy like that, but more so just know when to draw the line and when to walk away just so you can reserve your dignity. Know when to cut that tie from that person before you give and give everything you have left to them because these situations whether you realize it or not and I feel like most of the time we don't realize that it's happening when it's happening so take a step back and take a look but these situations are so draining like I always say energy is so transferable so you are in an energetic exchange for this person and they are literally quite literally sucking the freaking life out of you every time you are giving and giving and giving to them but not receiving anything back they're just taking your energy. They're taking your liveliness and your positivity and your love and they're not filling it back up for you. And I totally understand when you're in the situation, it's hard to let go, which is why I feel like majority of the time as women, we let ourselves get to the breaking point, which is pretty sad, but it is hard to recognize. And I'm speaking from personal experience. It's hard to recognize that something is so bad for you and draining you when you are actually in it. But once you hit that breaking point, they string you along so far that you literally are so exhausted you can't take it anymore. Once you get to that point and you finally are able to take a step back, look back at the damage that was done, feel how exhausted you are like in your heart and in your body, you're like, what the fuck was I doing? And I promise you that. I know it might not seem like it right now, depending on the situation you're in. Maybe you can't imagine your life without them. Maybe they're your comfort person and you're scared of being alone. I promise you, listen to this, settling for mediocrity is scarier than being alone. I said this once, I will say it one billion times. Settling for someone who doesn't see your true worth is so much more damaging and scary and harmful to you than being by yourself. Nothing bad can come from your time alone. And I want you to think about that. So think about being the one that got away, thinking about once you finally gain the courage to cut your ties with this person. You're alone, you're scared, especially after being with this person for so long, of course you're scared to be alone. But listen to this, nothing bad can come from being alone. Nothing bad will ever come from spending time alone with yourself, from taking the time to put effort into you, put your energy back into you. Because all that time and energy you were giving to that other person, you can finally put and channel back into yourself. And nothing bad will ever come from that. Take your time to yourself. Show your love 
to yourself. Exert all that energy back into you and nothing bad could possibly come from it. Because if you're so scared of being without this person, either one of two things is going to come from it. The first option being maybe you guys will end up back together. Maybe somehow somewhere down the line, you guys are both going to grow. He's going to grow up and mature and realize that he's ready for you. He better have a good ass apology and you guys will end up back together. That's the first option. And then the other option is that you will come out a stronger, better, wiser version of yourself who is so confident and comfortable with herself that she is okay with being alone. You come out a version of yourself who learns that she does not need anyone but herself. So yes, it can go one of two ways, but either way, it's not a bad option. If anything, if you're asking me, the best option is the one where you learn to be okay by yourself. And I feel like this is a canon event almost. It's a situation that a lot of us have to go through, learning to walk away from someone who you love and care about. But again, it teaches you things that you wouldn't have learned otherwise. It teaches you independency and that truly you need no one else but you. I know it's scary, but learning to be okay with being the one that got away is really powerful, honestly. Walking around knowing the fact that they will never be able to find someone who even compares to you, that they will be searching for you in every single person that they meet, find some peace in that. That's a confidence boost for sure. Like I said, they will try to come back, but they don't deserve you back. And typically, by the time they do get it together and try to come back, you are so sure of who you are. You realize what you deserve. You realize your standards. You don't even want them back. Learn to be the one that got away. Ideally, you know, you don't want to have to have it get to the breaking point, but sometimes that's what it takes. I know when we're in relationships that are hindering our common sense. Uh, it's really easy to overlook the negative things, but eventually you will get pushed so far to the edge that you have no choice but to step away. So whatever it takes, I know there's always the saying that women are over the relationship well before it ends because it takes a lot for me personally to walk away from someone I love, but like all those little hits keep coming and by the time you reach your breaking point, you are done, done. And they will say anything and everything to beg for you back they swear this time it'll be different, blah, blah, blah. Like, sorry, missed your chance. It's not a bad thing to be the one that got away. I think it's pretty inevitable. And I know the concept of it might sound kind of sad if you're thinking like, oh, well, he's wants me now that I'm already gone and he wants to be with me now. The right person will know how to hold your love. The right person would never overlook your value or miss that. Like you are a beautiful woman standing right in front of them and they can't choose you. It's not rocket science. It's really not. Like every other person around him could see your worth, but they couldn't. And that's on them. That is not your burden to carry. Don't feel guilty about it. Don't feel guilty about the fact that they could not choose you. That is on them. Because when we're on different levels as people, say you are like 100%, say you're 90% because 100 is unrealistic. Say you are 100% sure of yourself and you're confident and you're stable. And then say they are like 40%. You guys are on totally different tiers. You are on totally different playing fields. Like they can't keep playing catch up with you. You cannot keep sinking down to their level to try and meet them where they are at. It is their responsibility to work on themselves and heal themselves and grow on their own to catch up with you because I truly believe if they really wanted to they would put in the effort to be the best version of themselves for you to provide for you to care for you and to see eye to eye with you you can't see eye to eye with someone when you are all the way at the top and they're at the bottom you physically can't see eye to eye that is the issue when you start sinking down to their level to try and see them and meet them where they're at they should be meeting you where you are at. Like, don't lower yourself. Don't dim your own light to try to match somebody else's. I want you to think of love as a puzzle, okay? We each have our own puzzle within us that represents our love. And the missing piece that they have is only so tiny. Like, they only have the tiniest little bit of space for love in their heart right now. And you are this big, abundant ball glowing of love and life and joy. You're not gonna fit 
and their tiny little square that they have for you. You cannot shrink yourself down to fit into the gap that they have for you. You deserve someone who has room for all your love, who has room to hold all that you are, your entire being, and that person is out there. So stop trying to shrink yourself down and fit into someone else's life when they are literally telling you that they don't have space for you. And you can't wait on standby for them to be ready either. Like just accept that they are not ready for you right now and move on because the right person will know how to hold your love. And just because you're the one that got away for this person doesn't mean you can't be the one that stays for the next. You guys know I like to implement a little mantra or affirmation at the end of each episode. This week's affirmation is, I am deserving of the best kind of love Nothing that is meant for me will pass me by. And I want you to write that down, journal it, hang it up, remind yourself that throughout the week that the right person will not pass you by. So anything that you walk away from, if it's meant for you, it'll come back to you. So don't be afraid to release things. Release the things that no longer serve you. And that's another thing I want you to practice. If you have things or ideas of people that you created in your head that you are hanging on to, I want you to write it down and then rip it up. Physically and energetically detach yourself from these situations and just learn to be the one that walks away. The one that can detach and know that if it's truly meant for her, it will not pass her by. Let me know in the comments if that resonated with you guys, but I believe that wraps up today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a rating and leave me a little comment. Follow Hot and Unbothered at Hot Unbothered on Instagram and TikTok. You guys can listen to the podcast on my YouTube channel or listen on Spotify or Apple Music. I am always taking topic recommendations, so if you guys have anything specific you want to hear, let me know and I would love to put it in our next episode. I love you guys so so much and i will see you next friday bye